Moin, in this episode I'm 3D printing some movie props, making them conductive, electroplating a thick shiny layer of copper and then transforming them into brass and bronze, right in the oven. What? Yep, that was the plan, at least. How it all works and whether I hit my limits in the end, you find out now. So I'm printing everything in PLA to start with. It's a material everyone has, it's easy to print and it's quite simple to post process. I've made a few pieces and the first thing I want to do is give them a thick layer of copper. To show you the difference and why I always spend so much time on prep before electroplating, I plate one set directly on the raw PLA and another with proper surface preparation. For those of you who are new here, in order to deposit copper onto prints, I first need to make them conductive. To do that, I use either a conductive copper paint or a graphite coating, which also conducts fairly well. You can put a graphite coating over the part if you want or simply dip it. But in my experience, the best results come from airbrushing diluted copper paint at around 250 kilopascal. Just spray it on evenly, apply it two to three layers and make sure to let each layer dry thoroughly in between. Now it's time to jump straight into the electroplating. As always, I use a power supply that matches the size of the plating area, roughly 1 amp per square decimeter. This one goes up to 5 amps. For the electrolyte, I use a commercial acidic copper solution with a brightener additive. I just connect a copper anode to the positive terminal and toss in one of those magnetic stir bars. But before I do any of that, I put on my PPE. Super important. To ensure the coated prints stay well seated in the electrolyte, I bent myself a holder out of copper wire using an uncoated print as sort of template. People often ask whether the print ends up welded to the wire later, but that hardly ever happens as long as it just rests loosely. So now I'm winding even thinner copper wire around it to increase the contact area. It ends up looking like this. I hang the whole assembly in my rotary jig, attach a clamp that's then connected to the negative pole. Next, I submerge the construct at a 10 cm distance. I set the power supply to the corresponding constant current and it rotates back and forth in the bath for 4 hours. Then I turn on the aerator and achieve at a position of about 200 micrometers. Yeah, I think that's pretty thick. And here's the result of the untreated print. At first glance you can see the characteristic print lines. The copper shine dramatically highlights every tiny imperfection. Here you can clearly make out the banding of this 3D print. It all looks kind of cool but also extremely layered. Still, they turned out beautifully metallic. Now let's prep a print. First up, sanding. I like to use one of those small handheld tools for it. It doesn't cost much and does the job quite well. You can stick little pieces of sandpaper on it and then tackle flats, corners and curves and details or whatever with different attachments. I really don't want to do it by hand anymore. To get it really smooth, I spray on either filler or primer in several coats. I make sure it's fully dry so that no outgassing later ruins the metal layer. So work neatly and you'll have a solid foundation. Next, I use sandpaper to make everything even smoother and more level. Which grit? 1000 grit is fine. By now it's well filled. And as I said, once it's thoroughly dry, I recommend airbrushing with copper or graphite conductive lacquer. It takes a bit of practice and I don't really enjoy doing it. It's always a bit of a thrill. If you mess up here, you can start over from scratch. But once there's a layer of copper on it, the only thing that can ruin it is fingerprints. So always degrease everything thoroughly and ideally don't touch it while it's plating. That already looks much better. I'm using some sandpaper again to take off the light burst. Then various polishing compounds to bring out the copper shine. After 1000 hours you get a really good finish. And here it is again without any smoothing steps. 
Now for the interesting part. You can achieve surface diffusion on the copper by electroplating a thin layer of another metal onto it. Those atoms then slowly diffuse into the copper, creating a thin alloy layer. I wasn't aware of this effect before, but I happened upon it by accident myself. First I produce brass. For that I need a zinc electrolyte. In theory a ultra thin zinc layer is enough. Under heat it diffuses superficially into the copper forming brass. The setup is just like copper plating, fill the tank, then hang a zinc anode instead of a copper one. Everything's wired up the same way. I regulate the current with a constant voltage, but it doesn't really matter since it's only in there briefly and you can practice first on old copper sheets. So you dip it in, give it a quick swirl, then pull it out. Super cool. But oh dear, oh dear, oh dearie, when the end comes sad and dreary. The smoother copper can be coated even faster and better, really. This one's been galvanized, I've never seen zinc so shiny anywhere. And I want to keep it that way, so I'm putting it in the oven at 150 degrees Celsius. After half an hour it already looked intensely brass colored and I thought I'll just take it out. And if you were me you'd better stay you, luckily with special gear I was able to retrieve it. But I did the calculation without taking thermal expansion into account and even though I knew the copper behaves differently under heat than PLA, I went ahead anyway. Great. I then spent the whole evening trying to prevent it with temperature ramping and whatnot. In the end, I resorted to using clamps. Oh, pretty. Nah. Yeah, you need challenges after all, right? Okay, bronze. That's even more complicated since it needs higher temperatures and probably more time as well. For this I use a thin electrolyte. I don't have much of it, which is why I apply it with a galvanic brush. This method is very flexible, especially for decorative layers and it consumes far less electrolyte. I use a graphite rod as the anode and at a constant 3 volt brush several thin layers of tin onto the activated degrees copper. And this is what it looks like afterwards. Then I had the crazy idea of clamping the tin copper print between two metal plates and blasting the whole thing with a heat gun. That gets me above 400 degrees Celsius and I figured it would speed things up. It actually sort of worked. On the second print, the shiny one, I totally overdid it and probably pressed too hard. In any case, the PLA was partially squeezed out by thermal expansion and the heat seems to have turned it completely black. But I don't mind at all, because I've got amazing subscribers and members who gladly keep coming back to watch this kind of thing. Thank you all so much. So, I'm off to make a brand new video right now. Tschüss.